In uh, the previous video, we learned how the view and the controller are connected together. Time to see models in action. This time we want to save a user to the database. In the previous video, we used an array and we hard-coded the users. You can see it here. This time we want to create users using a form. This is your keyword, a form. So we need a get route that will display the form or return the form if you want it in that way and the post route that will get the data that we insert in the form and use it to create a user. Let's create the routes. So inside the web file, we need a URI that will show the view. The URI is users slash create. We are going to use the users controller, of course. And this is because we still work with the user entity. So users controller at and the function name this time is create. For the post route, the URI is simply users. So route post users. And again, same controller uses users controller at and the function name is store. Now, regarding the function names and the URIs, these are not random, but let's take everything step by step. Open the documentation for Laravel 5.3, and if you go to controllers and then resource controllers, you can see what I'm following. I'm creating each route according to the resource routing. So basically, all the routes that we have used till now and we have created and we will create in the next videos for show, edit, update and destroy can be summarized in just one line. This one, route resource. But we are not yet there. What we do now will help you to understand how routing works because you will not use this resource route every single time. Anyway, back to the web file. The two routes are ready, but if we try to access users create, we should get an error at this moment. So users slash create. It says that the create function in the users controller does not exist. So let's create it. Users controller, public function create. For now, let's just return create turn create try again perfect it returns create now of course we need to show a form instead where a user can insert data in the HTML fields inside resources views admin users we need a file called create.blade.php so new file and we save this as create.blade.php. I will not go through the styling of this file because this is a Laravel course. So I'm going right into creating a form. Form and we close this. Now what we might need for the user. In the array, we had first name, last name and location. But that was just for testing. This time we decided to go and save the users in the database. So we will use something called a migration. But at this moment, I just want you to know that the migration will create a user's table in the database. Do not worry about what is inside the migration. Ready? Perfect. Go to database, migrations, and in this folder, we have available two migrations. Open the first one, which is the create users table. Basically, this is just a class. This class will create a user's table with the fields ID, name, email, password, remember token, and two timestamps, created at and updated at. So if I right click and go to definition, you can see here that we create two fields, created at and updated at, with just by using timestamps. Now, regarding the other migration, don't worry about it, we will not need it in this video. So, I will show you a cool way for creating database tables, but first let me connect this application to the database. 
you have a .env file. In this file, we will configure the database connection. So we change the database name, username, and password. In my case, the database name is lara53, the username is root, and the password is no password at all. So save this and let me create the lara53 database. So lara53. However, there is one problem left. Because our application is already running, the changes will not take place to create a user. So stop the application and run it again. I will need to open a new tab for this. So I will completely close this one and run it here again. PHP artisan serve. Now the magic. With one just command, we will create some tables. Open again a new tab and run php artisan migrate. If you go back to php my admin now and refresh the database, you will see that we have three tables. We only care about the users table. This table has all the fields that we need. At this point, it is time to introduce the user model. Your application by default has a user model inside app folder. So if you go to the app folder, you can see here that we have a user model. This user model is connected with the users table in the database. There is a convention here. Database tables should be plural and model names singular. Our model name is user, but the database table is users. If you follow this convention, you will have a lot of advantages that we will see later provided by the framework. Time to create the HTML fields for the name, email, and password, and of course, the submit button. So, input, type is text, the name is name. Again, input, this type is email, and the name of the field is email. One last one, input type password, and the name of the field is password and the submit button. So input type submit and the value is create. Save the file and make sure that this time you return the view. So return view admin.users.create. Let's see the result. Excellent. So Renato test.gmail.com and 111. The URL includes the data that should be sent somewhere. But where? Well, in the store function that will create the user. So let's handle that. Create the function store. So public function store. And we need to inject a request instance. So request request. The request instance is used in order to get access to the requests. So to prove this, I will return all of the requests. Return request all. In the create blade file now, we need to specify the action and the method. The method of course is post and the action is users. This information is taken from the web file. So if you go to the web file, the action is the URI, which for the store is users, and the method is the type of route that we created, which is route post. Let's now go back and refresh. So let's try again. Renato test at gmail.com 111. Well, we get an error. It says token mismatch exception. Laravel, for security reasons, protects your application from cross-site request forgery attacks. To do this, we need to generate a CSRF token for each active user session managed by the application. For now, let's generate the CSRF token for the form. So, back in the create.blade file, and down here, we will generate the CSRF field, so CSRF field. Now save and go back to the create. Reload the page and try once again. 
Renato, test at gmail.com, 111. Now it works. We are inside the store function and we return an object with all the data needed to create a user. Last step for this video is to create the user. Make sure you import the user model. So at the top, you have to say use app user. And inside the store function, we can say user create request all. And in the end, just return success. So save this one and let's try one last time. Go back, reload, so Renato, test at gmail.com, 111. Let's check the table first. So the table for the moment is empty. Once I click create, we get success. And if we refresh now, we get the user.